behalf of the Omaha Police Department, I want to thank the citizens of Omaha and the law enforcement community locally and nationally for the overwhelming support they have shown us. It is humbling and it makes all of us proud to serve our great city. Mayor Stothard and I continue our constant communication on the incident that occurred yesterday. Mayor Stothard is going to make early arrangements to come home. She's at her son's wedding in Florida. She's going to come home early to attend the funeral. Today's press conference will be a clinical law enforcement briefing on the events that occurred yesterday. It is designed for transparency, just like we would do in the aftermath of any other large-scale occurrence that occurs in the city of Omaha. So please bear with me. There are quite a few details that I will go through. We have prepared a media packet, and at the end of my briefing, I will take some questions. On Monday, May 20th at 12.58 p.m., Omaha police officers assigned to the Metro Area Task Force were conducting surveillance in the area of Martin Avenue and Reed Street. Sergeant Jeff Kopetz, a 24-year police veteran, and Officer Robert Laney, a 25-year police veteran, were attempting to locate and arrest 26-year-old Marcus D. Wheeler. Wheeler was wanted on a felony warrant for first-degree assault as a result of a shooting that occurred on September 5, 2014. You should have copies of this in your media packet. While Sergeant Kopetz and Officer Laney were watching the residents at 3057 Martin Avenue, additional officers assigned to the multi-agency task force began responding to their location to assist with locating Wheeler. Among the responding officers were Officer Jeff Shada, a 21-year police veteran, and Officer Kerry Orozco, a seven-year police veteran. Officer Laney observed a suspect which matched the description of Wheeler on foot near the intersection of Vane Street and Martin Avenue. Officer Laney drove to the intersection of Vane Street and Martin Avenue where he observed Wheeler walking in a grassy area on the north side of Vane Street across from the address of 3159 Vane Street. Officer Laney radioed to Sergeant Kopetz that he had the suspect. Officer Laney parked his unmarked vehicle, equipped with emergency police lights in front of 3159 Vane Street. The red and blue emergency police lights were flashing at this time. Officer Laney got out of his vehicle and called Wheeler by his name and told him to stop. Wheeler responded by pulling a handgun and firing at least three gunshots at Officer Laney. One bullet struck the lower portion of the driver's side door of Laney's vehicle. It's depicted in the photo. Officer Laney did not have a chance to discharge his handgun in response. A second bullet struck the back window of a parked vehicle in the driveway of 3159 Vane Street. A female witness was standing near this vehicle and witnessed and corroborated the confrontation between Wheeler and Officer Laney. Wheeler then fled north towards the rear of 3057 Martin Avenue. At this point, Officer Laney radioed to Sergeant Kopetz that shots were fired and that Wheeler had fled towards 3057 Martin Avenue. Sergeant Kopetz quickly drove his unmarked vehicle into the driveway of 3057 Martin Avenue and turned on his red and blue emergency lights. The sergeant got out of his vehicle and observed Eric L. Coppage Williams and a small child come out of the front door of the residence. Sergeant Kopetz yelled out to Coppage Williams to come out away from the residence to him, so he's motioning her, come to us. Sergeant Kopetz described Coppage Williams' appearance as agitated and stressed as she yelled back at him. Sergeant Kopetz then observed Wheeler appear from the back of 3057 Martin Avenue walking across the driveway from the west towards the east. There's a green four-door sedan parked in the driveway that was between Wheeler and Sergeant Kopetz. Sergeant Kopetz gave Wheeler loud verbal commands to stop and get on the ground. Wheeler instantly responded to the verbal commands by quickly turning towards Sergeant Kopetz, taking a crouched shooting position, pointing a handgun, and firing multiple gunshots at Sergeant Kopetz. Sergeant Kopetz at this time returned gunfire towards Wheeler. At this moment, Officer Orozco and Officer Shada ran up to the driveway and formed a tactical approach behind Sergeant Kopetz's position. Wheeler continued east over a fence and into the backyard of 3055 Martin Avenue. The sergeant, followed by Officer Orozco and Officer Shada, approached the backyard along the west side of 3055. 
Martin Avenue. Sergeant Kopetz observed Wheeler in the backyard. Wheeler was again crouched down in a shooting stance and fired a second volley of multiple gunshots at Sergeant Kopetz. Sergeant Kopetz also fired multiple gunshots at Wheeler in return. Immediately after this exchange of gunfire, Officer Roscoe yelled out that she had been hit. Sergeant Kopetz turns towards her, observed her bleeding, and yelled for her to get on the ground. Sergeant Kopetz then lost sight of Wheeler as he fled towards the east. During the exchange of gunfire, Wheeler fired at least six gunshots from a 9mm caliber handgun, equipped with a high-capacity drum-type magazine, should be depicted in one of the photos. This exchange of gunfire was witnessed by a citizen. Officer Shada and Orozco did not discharge their duty weapons. Their duty weapons were 45 caliber. Officer Orozco suffered a lethal gunshot wound to her upper chest area just above the front panel ballistic vest line. Officer Shada pulled Officer Orozco to the front yard of 3055 Martin where Officer Shada began to administer first aid. Two uniformed patrol officers arrived on scene and began CPR on Officer Orozco until the Omaha Fire Department arrived and took over the emergency medical procedures. Wheeler was struck by two gunshots. One was a lethal gunshot wound to his chest. However, he was able to continue eastbound through the backyards along Martin Avenue to the rear of 3043 Reed Street. A witness observed Wheeler collapse in the yard on the southeast corner of the residence at this address. The witness also observed a handgun fall to the ground with Wheeler. Witnesses alerted officers to Wheeler's location. Sergeant Kopetz, Officer Laney, and other officers that had arrived to the scene located Wheeler lying face down, um, excuse me, located Wheeler lying on the ground at the rear of 3043 Reed Street. Lying next to Wheeler, was the 9mm Glock handgun. The uniformed patrol officers began CPR on Wheeler until the fire department could take over. Officer Roscoe and Wheeler were transported to CHI Hospital in extremely critical condition with CPR in progress for both. Officer Roscoe was treated by a trauma team at the hospital. Officer Roscoe succumbed to her injuries and was pronounced dead at the hospital. Preliminary autopsy results show that Officer Roscoe died from a gunshot wound to the upper chest just above the ballistic vest line. Further evidence showed that the bullet that struck Officer Roscoe passed through her chest and exited her back. A bullet was recovered from inside of her rear ballistic vest panel. This bullet was examined by the Omaha Police Department Forensic Firearms Examiners. The bullet was fired from a 9mm handgun. The only person at this scene that had a 9mm handgun was our suspect, Wheeler. Wheeler was also treated by a trauma team at the hospital. He also succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead at the hospital. Preliminary autopsy results have not been completed and are not available at this time. To summarize, the firearms involved in this incident include a 9mm handgun fired a minimum of nine times by Wheeler, at least three gunshots fired at Officer Laney on Vane Street, and at least six gunshots fired at the three officers in the driveway of 3057 Martin Avenue. Wheeler was armed with a Glock 9mm handgun with a high-capacity drum-type magazine with a 50-round capacity. Wheeler's handgun was loaded with 45 rounds of 9mm ammunition when it was recovered. An additional Glock 9mm magazine with a magazine capacity of 15 rounds was located on the ground in the backyard of 3055 Martin Avenue. This magazine contained eight rounds of ammunition. Sergeant Kopetz was the only police officer that discharged his duty weapon. Sergeant Kopetz fired between three to four shots at Wheeler. All four officers in this incident were armed with Glock 45 handguns. Law enforcement officers that are assigned to the Metro Area Fugitive Task Force wear a modified tactical police uniform due to the nature of their work. The uniform typically consists of tan pants, a dark shirt, and a black tactical vest, clearly marked with police on front and back. At this point in the investigation, 
13 sworn law enforcement personnel and 11 civilian witnesses have been interviewed by the Omaha Police Department's Officer Involved Investigations Team. This investigation continues at this time. Autopsy and toxicology results are pending and forensic, and forensic firearms and ballistic examinations will be conducted. Wheeler is a convicted felon. He's also a known gang member. He was convicted for a federal narcotics distribution charge. He was sentenced to five years, six months in federal prison. According to court documents, he ended his term of federal supervised release on November 5, 2013. Douglas County Attorney Don Klein has been contacted and briefed on this incident. The sergeant who discharged his weapon is 54, I'm sorry, 51-year-old Jeffrey Kopetz. And again, he's a 24-year veteran assigned to the Omaha Police Fugitive Squad. He has been a supervisor in that squad for many, many years. Per Omaha Police Department policy, any officer who discharges his or her firearm that results in injury or death is placed on paid administrative leave, pending the officer-involved investigations team and internal affairs investigations. Sergeant Kopes has been placed on paid administrative leave. Any additional information about this incident will be released by the Omaha Police Department's Press Information Office or by myself directly. A grand jury will be convened to investigate per state law. The actions of my officers were justified as they were attempting to apprehend a dangerous suspect who engaged them in gunfire on at least two occasions. I'm going to go ahead and take a few questions as to the incident at hand. Please identify the news organization you're with, state your name, and speak loudly so the, any viewers can hear your question as well. It's a rare weapon. The drum magazine is not something we see very often. And the drum magazine can go to an offender's mindset. And it, it certainly shows you the type of weaponry that is out there on occasion. But even this one is, is rare, even for law enforcement to see. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the time and care that goes into getting such a dangerous person in custody? Sure. The Metro Area Fugitive Task Force, they do their homework. Once they get a warrant that's signed by a judge, they start their background work trying to identify where that particular suspect may be. And their background work involves all the investigative tactics that a normal investigator would take. And on this particular occasion, they took it upon themselves to even conduct surveillance of the location to see if they could find him. Once they spotted him, they are also trained to take those offenders into custody. And what they will do is they will focus on the worst of the worst that we have in Omaha. Oftentimes, they're given special assignments based on who we feel is the most dangerous person in Omaha with a warrant at the time. I'm not saying Wheeler was, but he certainly was extremely dangerous and on our high list. I'm going to go to Tom Becker. You had a question. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Yesterday in the press conference, you would not talk about this because you said the investigation was ongoing. Right. Do you consider the investigation to be complete now, or is there still more investigating going on? Well, there's always more investigating going on because we still have the autopsy results. We still have to do the ballistic testing and do all the, the legwork on that. But this is as complete as we're going to get after one day. And as I said earlier, we feel it's important to come out to the public, let the public know what happened. We do this after every major occurrence. And, it, and it's the way we operate. It's, try, it's designed for transparency, Tom. And we wanted to ensure that we did this on this shooting as well. In essence, our procedures have not changed. And our protocol hasn't changed because an officer was involved. Chief Paul Gutierrez, uh, Fox 42 News. Uh, you had mentioned that at the scene, uh, Erica Coppedge Williams seemed distraught and that she was yelling at officers. Right. Could, could you expand on that? What was she saying? What was she yelling? How distraught was she? Sergeant Kopetz described her as distraught and stressed. He's motioning for her to come over towards him. I don't know how much more of a description you'd like me to get into with that. 
but she's clearly agitated at that point and and stressed, and that's based on his version as to what took place. Did, did she seem like she was a danger to the public at the time? Agitated and stressed? I don't know if that means it's danger to the public. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding your question as to where. Uh, I was just trying to get a sense of how agitated she was. And his she reasoning was for having him, his reasoning, the sergeant's reasoning for motioning them over was to get them to a safe location. He's not viewing them as any threat or any suspect at that point. Is that where you're going with it? I'm going to surmise that's where you were going with it. And, and partly, I, I was just wondering, you know, what was said during the exchange? I don't have those exact notes with, with me right now. I paraphrased it for this press release today. We're going to go to the next question right here. Uh, Chief Kelly Bartnick with uh, Channel 3. You still have some officers, at least you did, up on the scene there. Um, how, how does that play out in the, as a timeline? And what is the outcome of this investigation since the suspect is deceased? Well, the outcome of the investigation, the investigation will continue with uh, all the evidence that we need to gather so it can proceed to a grand jury. It will be presented to a grand jury for final closing of this particular case. They will e either issue a bill, a true bill or not, and that's based on their investigation. So there are things that we need to do to continue for that package for the county attorney to put forward to the grand jury. As far as the Omaha Police Department officer involved in guest investigation team, they will continue work in this case until all these elements are shored up. And oftentimes we have more information come in later on as witnesses didn't want to come forward earlier, et cetera. Again, I always, like I always say, we're giving you what we have right now. Do you know where that gun came from? Was it stolen? I don't know where that gun came from. Yes, sir, in the back. Chief Nick Coger, NACU. I'm looking at the criminal history, and perhaps I misheard your uh, recounting of the federal sentence. I understood you to say he was released in November of 2013 from his federal sentence. The criminal history here contains, at least on two dates, crimes committed in 2013. Only in for a few months, and also, can you comment at all on the charges that he did face being basically dismissed by prosecutors with nothing but a fine? We can get you that information, Nick. It's, it's just I don't have that packet in front of me. And it's a little bit more detailed of an explanation because you're talking about a suspect's criminal history sheet. So when we're done here, we'll get you those answers. Chief, today the focus here is about the What are we going to, your name and organization, please. Lindsay Thiesel. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, today the focus is about the investigation, but the public is outpouring the concern for their men and women in blue. How are your police officers doing today, um, and, and what nature is the public is that? Obviously, the Omaha Police Department and on law enforcement in general is, is, is taking this very hard. But as hard as we're taking it and as, and as bad as we feel, I, I will say I'm very proud of the Omaha Police Department. I'm proud of their, of their professional response. Many officers came in early to work to assist, answering radio calls early. They came in and they did their job professionally. And that's the response that any community would want in the aftermath of this. Any more questions? Jeff Saban, WOWT. Hi, Jeff. Um, are there any, are you ready to release any information as far as the services? We can get that to you. The services, I believe, are in the, uh, they're coming to the end of getting fi finalized. So we'll make sure you get that. I don't want to speak out of turn and tell you that at a certain date when they're not. And I apologize if I am missing a word here or there, but I haven't slept as well as I usually do. Are you able to tell us if baby Olivia was released today? I don't know. Chief, uh, you talk about the stress that the police officers have been under. What type of counseling or support is there available, not only for the officers that were involved in the shootout, but I would imagine it's very stressful to any officer out on the force. Uh, is there services or are there uh, opportunities for them to, to get the counseling and, and what, what, what do they go through? There is. The department as a whole has access to a peer support group that is especially adept at handling the aftermath and, and working officers through scenarios like this. There are about nine or ten officers directly involved in either the CPR or the incident that we will have a mandatory referral 
in which they'll get an opportunity to talk to somebody that's a, that's a doctor in this field to make sure that they're prepared to come back to work and that they can uh, process this appropriately. I'm going to take one more question. Christina, do you want that? I don't see any I don't see any change the vest is what it is it's not going to cover every aspect of our body and it never will law enforcement will always be a dangerous job and there's an element of risk that Omaha police officers and officers all across this country put themselves through to keep a society safe Mr. Wheeler in this occasion was being sought after because he attempted to shoot and kill another member of our community. So it's law enforcement's job to find that individual and try to bring them into custody. And that's all they were doing here. And because of the elements of everything that goes in law enforcement, it's dangerous. And one of the officers was killed on this occasion. And I don't know how to summarize it any more than that. It was a tragic circumstance. That didn't have anything to do with equipment, tactics, or anything like that. It had to do with the fact that this job is extremely dangerous. And I'm going to close by saying we appreciate the Omaha community support. It, it is truly overwhelming to, to receive the letters and the phone calls and the text and the emails showing this support for the Omaha Police Department. And I have this feeling a week ago, two weeks ago, a year ago, but I have it even more today. The Omaha community is a special place. Thank you and have a good evening.